Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and another project update this time on the Frontera again to show you the shiny paint which I showed you in the, uh, the last video what I'm doing now, I'm just in the process of dropping the tank off the car which was fun <laughs> to say the least um, getting it back on is going to be even more fun I've actually had it dropped down before part way to be able to get to the pipes on the top of the tank when I replaced all the uh, all the fuel pipes but um, the reason I'm doing it now is that this big cradle which holds the tank round at the other side is actually really badly rotten so if I just try and squeeze around to show you I don't think you actually see very well now the worst bit's actually down on the floor but what I'll do I'm gonna uh, Get, get it off, clean it up, um, wire brush it with the wire brush on my grinder and I'm going to uh, an attempt a weld repair. Now the tank itself is plastic and that comes out of the cradle so I'll be able to work on the cradle safety with that, um, safely without any risk of fire or anything. So um, I was going to see if I could get it through the MOT without doing it but then when I've been looking at it today it's amazing, it was actually still holding on because the rust is so bad on the other side. So uh, once I've got it off the car fully, I shall show you. I'll just show you what you have to remove to get it off the car. There's obviously the fuel inlet and the breather, which go onto those two pipes. There's the inlet and outlet pipes, which I've disconnected. There's the uh, breather uh, return, oh sorry, the breather pipe. Or maybe that is the return, I'm not sure actually because there's actually three pipes on the tank um, and then obviously the electrical connector for the uh, fuel level uh, fuel gauge in the car and um, the actual cradle is then held on with four bolts which bolts up there into uh, into the chassis it'll also give me a chance to clean up this end of the chassis a lot easier as well with the tank dropped because most of the chassis did actually look like that before you see how crusty and gammy and horrible that all looks but it's actually solid underneath and once you hit it and chop it with a uh, with a chisel or something and then give it a bit of a wire brush it actually cleans up pretty decent so what i've been doing is i've been cleaning up all the chassis and i've been wax oiling it and most of it's done but this section here at the back i haven't got around to doing yet i've actually chopped some of it off already which will give you an idea of just how crusty it was. But as I say, it's solid. There's there's no welding needed on the chassis. It's just not very pretty looking. As I say it looks a bit like the wreck of the Titanic in places, but it is actually very very solid. So you can see some of the new brake pipes that I fitted. I actually did the brake pipes last year, but time's flown. I've only just got around to carrying on where I left off. I replaced the pipes that go to both back wheels that go into this compensator valve that allows for uh, for load and then all the pipes from there towards the front of the truck and they join about about halfway down the truck where it joins because everything from halfway down towards the front was okay apart from one bit at one corner i think it was actually no both corners i did i redid as well but the pipes in between up to the master cylinder were all right but the pipes from the master cylinder to the front wheels needed replacing as well so i did them i've also replaced these rubber hoses and i replaced the main fuel pipes again to about halfway down the truck replaced them with plastic ones because they were all rotted so uh so yeah guys so i shall see you in the next video please like browse subscribe notification bell all the usual stuff so you don't miss any updates and i shall do a video once i've got this fully off the, the car and I'll show you just how bad it is. All right, guys, see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.